All descendants of Adam, one person, we all came here. As we said in the beginning from the Quran itself. And Allah is telling us, and I'll remind you, in chapter 49, when Allah is telling us that He brought us all from one single person. From that one person, the one that He brought His mate from, is still one person, Adam and Eve, and from them created many tribes and many nations and made them different. Allah said He made us different. So we can recognize each other. But the most beloved to Allah, the most honorable in the sight of Allah, is the one who him, submits to Him, obeys Him, is sincere with Him, and at peace whatever Allah gives them. And that's called Islam. Think about it. And I'll leave you as I greeted you in the beginning and ask that Allah bestow upon you the very best of this life and the best of the next life. This is my prayer for all of us. Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam Rasulullah. Salaamu Alaikum, you're still here. I didn't bore you to death yet. I'm back. And by the way, we got to the point where we do the question and answers. And you look like a pretty progressive group out here. You got, you guys are pretty modern, aren't you? Huh? You're modern, right? You're not old-fashioned, right? Anybody here is not old? Is anybody old-fashioned here? Huh? Anybody? Get out of here. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do it a little bit different. What we're going to do, you see, I'm going to ask you the questions. You're going to give me the answers, okay? First question. Yeah. If a hen and a half lay an egg and a half and a day and a half, how long does it take a rooster to lay a hard-boiled egg on a breast doorknob? Eh, wrong answer. You should have phoned a friend. You don't like that game. Okay. Okay, I got another game. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll do it this way. You see what you do? Give me the answer. Just give me the answer. I'll guess what the question is. If I'm right, I win a trip to the Bahamas. No, they do it on Jeopardy. Come on, guys. I thought you're modern here. What's going on? Okay, here's one. I love it. I love it when people listen to half of what I said. Uh, no, I'm serious. I really do, because that means you're just like my kids. It said, if God slash Allah has no gender, why is He only referred to as He, even in the Arabic language? Why isn't He referred to as She and He to confirm that He has no gender? Don't hold your, your hand. Don't, don't admit that you did that, okay? <laughs> I know you didn't hear the part where I said that this is based on the linguistic style of the language of Arabic that it is the royal status and it works that way. Now I didn't invent the language nor did I invent the Quran. Okay? But we understand, we understand that that is how it is. The same way for the plural. Okay, it says we, our, and us throughout the Quran. But guess what it does do? It gives a good test to those who really want to believe something wrong with the Quran. If they really want to be disbelievers in the Quran, Allah is giving you a chance. Go ahead, be a disbeliever. Especially with the we, our, and us. Oh, no, I see Trinity. Oh, okay. See what you want to see. Many people do. It's okay. But thanks for the question. You're asking about introducing Islam to non-Muslim neighbors and friends without offending them? <laughs> Lots of luck. If you find out, let me know. I'll be really interested in that one. But we'll tell you what the Prophet Islam used to do. He used to bring it just like it was, but in the nicest, kindest way. But he never watered it down. He never came up with these weird excuses and some kind of, you know, stuff that people say today. And I look at him and I go, are you sure you're a Muslim? Where did you get this stuff from? You don't apologize. If you don't want to talk about it, go home and shut up. But don't come out here and start making up stuff about Islam. This is very dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. Allah can dump you if you do that kind of stuff. And you'll be as misguided as anybody else on the planet. If you don't know what's Islam, you say, I don't know. A lot of stuff I don't know. I get questions like that all the time. Why do you think I made you write them down? I told them, you didn't know, I didn't know the answer. 
Mm -hmm. He said, what inspired me to be a Muslim? I'll tell you one thing. I was not looking for a new religion. I was trying to convert Muslims to become Christians. He <laughs> said, what attracted you to Islam? Absolutely nothing. No, there was nothing about Islam attracted to me. I was brainwashed and brain dead. All I had was one thing. I got to convert people to my way. I used to go to Mexico with another friend of mine. We'd go to Mexico to convert Christians to Christianity. <laughs> we did. We'd go down and tell the Catholics, you're not saved, you didn't know Jesus. They got a big statue of him up there. What are you talking about? said, how do you feel about it now? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Nashkur Allah, shukr Allah. I love it. I love every bit of it. What happened though, is a long story. It's so long, I can't do it now. I want to tell you where to find it. My name, you have to know how to spell my name correctly. I don't know, very seldom people get it right. So I'm going to tell you. Simple, five letters. Y U S U F then my last name is Estes, E-S-T-E-S, -E got it, dot com. You get the whole story there. Got it? All right. Then you get the whole thing and you'll find out what really happened and how that a Catholic priest who was a friend of mine, lived with us, my father, Protestant minister, myself, my wife, our family, how we got to Islam. Each of us on our own way and a different story. A weird story when you read it, you'd be like, huh? But it really happened. Alhamdulillah. How many of you already heard about that story? Anybody? I have the audience. Oh. I'm not going to fool you guys, are you? Something about the recent South something issue. South Pacific? I just want you to say it. How many Muslims knew about that South Park issue? Raise your hand. Really? Stop for the love. What are you doing watching that crowd? <laughs> I'm going to call the Bismillah police on you more. It said that the rest of my family convert to Islam. Go read the story. Somebody said he's proud to be a redneck Muslim. Hee <laughs> haw! All right. Good for you. People say that's wrong, how can I keep who I am and still be a Muslim? Look, anybody who knows there's only one God and there's no partnership, that's not meaning you believe in one trinity, okay? One God, no partners. If you believe the first commandment in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, the book of Deuteronomy, it's listed twice, it said, I'm the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt and the house of bondage, you know no God besides me. And then it says, Thou shalt not have any other gods beside me. Second one, don't make any images of anything of God, of anything that walks on the earth, creeps on the earth, actually says, creeps on the earth, swims in the sea beneath, or flies in the air above. I'm sitting in the front row of a church, looking up at the pastor, standing there at the pulpit, we call it the minbar, and I'm reading this. Got the Bible open and I'm reading it. No creepy thing. Nothing walking on the earth. Nothing swimming in the sea beneath. And no flying thing. Now while I'm sitting there, I'm looking. Right behind him over on this side over here, there's a big cross with a man on it. Somebody that walked on the earth. I went, whoa. And then on the front of the pulpit right here is a fish. Huh? I will make you fishers of men. A lot of them are using that fishing emblem that they put on there. Huh? And the stained glass window up top, it's got the dove with the olive branch. I said they didn't miss a thing. Huh? But if you really believe in those commandments and you're keeping those commandments, you're believing that Muhammad is a prophet, not a God, not a son of God, a prophet who said the same thing. And you're trying your best. You might be a Muslim and you didn't even know it. It's not about your clothes. It's not about your skin color. It's not about your language. It's all about this one thing. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, there is a morsel of flesh inside of a human being that if it is good, then the whole of the matter is good. But if it is bad, then the whole of the matter is rotten. And that morsel of flesh is the heart.
If your heart is for Almighty God, and He knows that, then who am I to criticize you or anybody else? We are not the judges of each other. Allah didn't put us here to judge each other. In fact, Allah says, Alayhi salahu bi al hakimin. Is not Allah the best of judges? So we'll leave it for Allah to judge who's who. But until we can be together again in this life for something good, or in front of Him on the day of judgment, I'll leave you as I greet you in the beginning. Peace. Assalamu alaikum.